Okay, can everyone at the back hear me? Just give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Cool. Everyone's still awake? Cool. Okay, well, if you're not, I'll hopefully try and keep you entertained. Um, as Ashley said, everyone knows me as Jefficus in the online world. My real name's actually Jeffrey, just in case anyone was wondering. Um, so who am I and why am I here? Uh, I've presented at a couple of word camps. This is my third one. Uh, the first one I did was in Spain, and I presented last year at WordCamp Cape Town. I did a technical talk last year on WordPress as a development framework, and this year I'm not going to go as techy as last year. Hopefully everyone can get something to take away from that. Um, I've worked at WeThemes.com, the premium theme house, uh, since 2009, and I've been work working with WordPress since 2007. Um, so I've been developing for WordPress for quite a while. Um, I was previously a business analyst, uh, which was interesting. And um, yeah, I'm a musician as well, so I'm a little bit quirky sometimes. So what am I going to be talking about? I'm going to be trying to give you an idea of how to choose and some of the best tools for the job in terms of the WordPress ecosystem. Um, while I can't go through every tool, I'm going to try and give you an idea of how to choose good tools and then show you some of the ones which I recommend. So, there's this quote which keeps coming up at conferences over and over again. If I had eight hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend six sharpening my axe. Um, now, basically, that talks about preparation. And that applies to tools. And if you're not choosing the right tools, you're going to end up spending many, many more hours on a project and even many, many more developing if you're doing custom development. But uh, Abraham Lincoln apparently said that. But So thanks, Abe, but WordPress isn't an ax. Or is it? Then I came across this, which is a parody on that. And basically what this is saying, if you can't read it, was the problem with quotes on the internet is that it's hard to find, uh, it's hard to verify their authenticity. And the same goes for tools. You might find this amazing tool, or you think it's amazing out there, but it's really, really hard to actually tell if it's useful, if it's uh, not some uh, random hacker just trying to get involved with your site. So it's difficult to actually assess whether the tools are good and whether you're getting money and value out of them. Yeah, so hopefully get that. So I'm just going to run through a couple of presumptions. Uh, for this talk. So fact number one, for every project that you approach, whether it's custom dev or whether you're building a product or building a client website, you have a budget. Now by budget what I mean is you have a time constraint, you have a uh, intellectual constraint, you might not understand how to code advanced PHP, and you might have a financial constraint, so you might only have X amount of money to build a project. And fact number two, this is one of my personal favorites, code reuse, dollar, dollar bills. If you keep reusing a product, you're going to save money, and you're not going to spend that time again and again and again. So like I said, with the budget, you don't have that budget anymore. You've saved that time. Number three, I'm speaking to myself here as well. You are not the greatest developer ever. If something else has been already built, you've got to have a damn good reason to rebuild it yourself. Otherwise, just use the existing tools out there, leverage them, and make profit from them. So it got me thinking, what is a tool? And the dictionary definition for a tool is that top thing, a device or implement, especially one held in the hand, like my phone, used to carry out a particular function. But it goes a step further, and it talks about in terms of computing. It's a piece of software that carries out a particular function, typically creating or modifying another program. So how does that apply to something like WordPress? WordPress carries out a particular function. You're using it. So it is definitely a tool. But take that one step further. What about plugins? What about themes and third-party providers for WordPress, like Manage WP or WP Engine? Yes, they're all tools. So in terms of the WordPress ecosystem, where are these tools? Um, you've got various parties involved here. 
You've got Automatic, um, who provide you with WordPress.com, which is a third-party service. You've got theme shops like Elegant Themes, Woo Themes, Studio Press, plug-in shops like Gravity Forms, the Rocket Genius guys, and as I said, third-party services, Manage WP, WP Engine, and then there's you, because if you're building custom projects with WordPress, you have your own custom solutions, your own little snippets of code and libraries, and your process. That's all a tool which you use to build your products. Number four, which is the most important one for this presentation. I only have X amount of time, so there's simply way too many uh, plugins, themes for me to go through them all. So I'm going to be very opinionated from here on in. Um, feel free to disagree with me and uh, question me at the end. But um, yeah, based on my experience, I'm going to give you some good, good ideas. So, who's this guy? <laughs> How many of you have seen The Expendables 2? I won't give you the spoiler, but anyway. So, this analogy of tools. I thought of Chuck Norris because he's quite efficient. He goes in, he gets the job done, he kills the bad guys, and he doesn't cause too much damage. He pretty much, he's quick, he's lean, he's mean. Then on the flip side, you've got Terry Crews, who with his big bazooka will do the same thing as Chuck Norris, but he's bulky and he'll cause a lot of collateral damage. So if you think about a, a WordPress plugin, let's say you take a form plugin, uh, on the one hand you might have something that's free and it gives you a lot of JavaScript conflicts with WordPress itself. That's bad. Whereas you have a premium solution which has got support and it's not going to conflict with your other libraries. That's the kind of thing you want to go for. Lean and mean. So, selecting the right tools. My process for going about selecting the right tools is, I start off by saying trial and error. You're only gonna learn by experience, and that's gonna come with time. The more projects you do, the more you're gonna improve your tool set, the more you're gonna know, oh, I need to use this plugin, oh, I need to use this hosting, that kind of thing. Peer review. It's important to realize that WordPress is a community. We need to talk to each other. If you, for example, need to know I would like to use a theme for directory listing, talk to people in the community. Tweet at, I'll use me as an example, tweet at me and say, hey Jeff, what should I be using for this? We're a community, we need to be involved with each other. Code quality and performance. Uh, this only really comes with um, companies who hire good developers, good designers. It's hard to gauge that, but you can also learn that from people in the community. Like me standing here with you now, I'm telling you my opinion, which are the best products. It, especially in terms of code quality. You don't want a badly coded theme or plugin. It's a nightmare. Does it conflict, like I mentioned before? Smart planning. Um, in addition to working at WooThemes, I, every now and then I pick up a client project. And one of the big problems that I've found, um, I'm very fortunate I can pick and choose which clients I want to take on. but a big problem is when clients, they don't plan their project. They don't understand how things like custom post types work. They don't understand how far you can extend WordPress. That'll bite you very, very badly, and a project can go very, very wrong, and your budget can be completely used up if you don't plan ahead, especially with using things like plugins and themes. Consult with experts on that. It's very important. And test your tools. If you're not sure about a particular tool, get it. Use it, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, throw it aside and remember that for next time. Is there one tool to rule them all? No. The process is gonna be different for each and every one of you. I build products, so my process is gonna be different for, let's say for example, you're building client websites. So I've got a couple of scenarios, just to give you an idea of how different it can be. So scenario number one, the lone developer. The guy who's sitting in front of his machine, just hacking away there, freelancing. He's going to be uh, using things which is going to save him time primarily. So he's going to want to use a lot of pre-built solutions and not necessarily custom code things. Number two, the development house or agency. Uh, something like Ogilvy or Quirk. They're going to have multiple developers. Now they want, might want to necessarily focus on more collaboration tools. Um, a really good example is the WordPress theme P2. 
where they can use to talk to each other and keep each other uh, up to date of what they're working on. We use that at WooThemes.com uh, because we're a distributed team. That's something that you might want to use as your tool set. Number three, the businessman or the guy running a service site. So if you're a company and you're using WordPress to uh, run your uh, company's website, or if you're running a membership site, you're going to want to just buy a pre-built solution as well. And you're going to want to integrate with payment gateways. You're not going to want to worry about custom development. You're going to outsource a lot of that. And a tool in that case would be the expert that you outsource to. And number four, the product builder. Um, quite a cool example of this is, I don't know if you guys have heard of Happy Tables. Um, they're a restaurant engine, uh, I think they're based out of the States. And what they allow you to do is you go to their website, you sign up, and you can create a website for your um, restaurant very, very easily. Now, not many people know that that's actually WordPress, which they've custom designed, uh, modified the back end quite heavily. Um, it looks nothing like WordPress, but they're leveraging WordPress in order to build a completely new product. The same thing for Obox that I think called Quick Commerce. And uh, that's using WooCommerce and WordPress to do the same kind of thing. So, development tools. Um, you can break this down, like I mentioned earlier, some of them. I won't run through this again. But uh, some of my essential development plugins, which I use a lot. Um, these are all plugins. You can find them for free on the WordPress.org repository. Um, debug bar and debug bar console. These are awesome. Um, like you saw and heard in some of the previous presentations on uh, server issues, things like queries, caching, those two plugins will help you to isolate where a problem is. If there's a particular section of code where it's taking 20 seconds to do a query to a database, those will help you find it. And it's a really nice interface. It's a little bit of configuration, but it's well worth it if you're doing development. Then if you want to build themes, um, theme check and VIP scanner are really, really good because uh, what they do is WordPress has a set of list of coding standards. And what theme check and VIP scanner does is it, it has a set of rules in there. And it allows you to use those to check your theme. Um, are you following the rules? Are you making some of the basic errors? Are you using deprecated functions? That's a big problem within uh, themes at the moment, is guys using old functions from like WordPress 2, which is ridiculous. <laughs> it happens. I'll, I'll get to that. Um, then in terms of security, this is a very hot topic at the moment. I don't know if many of you no, but uh, WooThemes went through a hack a couple of months ago, um, which wasn't fun. And uh, there's a couple of plugins which you can use on if you're just running a WordPress site, which I would recommend installing just to kind of cover yourself if your host doesn't cover you. Um, Security Scanner, that's built by a company called Security. Um, they're a sec WordPress security company, and they also do other sites, I think. Um, but Security Scanner will allow you to check for common security issues on your website and show you, like, there's malware here, this file is infected, that kind of thing. WP File Monitor Plus, I love um, because I want to know exactly what's happening with my files on my server at all times. I install this on pretty much every one of my personal websites. And what it does is if there's a file change on your website, it'll send you a list of these are the files changed, this is the checksum. This is the date and time that it changed, which is awesome if a hacker comes in and gets access to a file, something like that. Then limit login attempts and force strong passwords. It does what it says. It limits login attempts and it forces you to use a really good password for your WordPress account, which not a lot of people do, which is strange. Um, backup. Uh, like that was mentioned earlier in talks, uh, VaultPress is an amazing solution. It costs you money, it's worth it. Trust me on that one. Because they do proactive backup of your, your website. So you don't have to go into your website and say, backup. They're actively polling your website, backing up when things change, backing up your WordPress files and your WordPress database. Um, the downside is if you've got a custom solution, they won't back that up. So that's you've got to do yourself. 
Alternatives, plugin-wise, is Backup Buddy. Uh, Press Backup is a, a new one. Um, Backup Buddy is a premium plugin. You've got to pay for it. It's really good. Press Backup has a free version and a service. And Manage WP, they're also really good. And they provide backups, and they also provide you an interface uh, where you can manage multiple WordPress sites from the interface. And that's pretty cool if you're, if you're like a freelance developer and you've got multiple clients. You can do upgrades and everything from one interface. You don't have to log into each WordPress site, which is awesome. Then my particularly favorite ones, I call them Massive Impact Plugins. Um, WooDojo, I might be a bit biased here, but WooDojo I install on most of the sites that I do. It's built by WooThemes, it's free. It gives you maintenance mode, it gives you login branding, a whole host of other features. Go check it out. Then W3 Total Cache has been mentioned numerous times by now. I'm pretty sure you've all realized that it's an awesome plugin. Um, this, the free version is also amazing. Then WordPress SEO by Yoast. It's also been mentioned a couple of times. It's pretty much hands down the best SEO plugin out there. Get it if you want to improve your SEO. Um, if you want to build a really, really basic membership site, uh, there's a free plugin by a guy called Justin Tadlock. He's quite a prolific member of the WordPress community. Um, it allows you to manage permissions on individual posts, pages, and create additional user roles, different access rights. It doesn't have integration with payment gateways, so you can't run a membership site and earn money from it. But it's really nice if you want to just do a basic solution. And it can be extended, which is awesome. These are pretty much my favorite plugins at the moment in terms of functionality. If you're doing anything with forms, and it's really, really important, like if your contact form is really important to you, and if you're doing user registration and capturing details, personally, I would not use something free. I would use Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms is hands down the best form builder out there. You can do contact forms. I recently did an experiment with this where I built 90% of a client database system with no coding using WordPress, Gravity Forms, and WooCommerce. Pretty simply, just building forms with Gravity Forms. The only thing I can't do with Gravity Forms is do updates to existing data. You can create data, you can create custom post types, you can email yourself. It's really, really powerful. WooCommerce, as Mark mentioned earlier, 350,000 downloads in a year says that it's quite an amazing plugin. It's free as well. We've got one of the largest, I think, if not the largest, extensions library. So there's loads of add-ons for WooCommerce. It's also built using the, probably the best coding standards out there in an e-commerce platform. And I've reviewed quite a few. WooSlider, um, a lot of sites have a, a slider in the, just under the navigation. Um, it's a quite a nice little promo area feature. Um, Flex slider is one of the best responsive sliders. If you know much about design, you'll know responsive means on like a full size site, it'll adapt to my iPhone and show me content differently and appropriately for my device. Woo slider is a plugin which, allow, which uses Flex slider um, to allow you to do that really easily on your site. And if you need to have your site in multiple languages, the guys at WPML have a plugin. They're amazing. They're really, really good. And a lot of the premium themes support that. Just some other useful ones which I've used before and are worth noting down. Event Espresso, if you're looking to run events, it's another paid for solution. They've got some really, really good developers on there. Um, they were actually featured on CNN, I think it was, in the States. Um, they built an iPhone app where you could install the plugin on your website. And then when someone came to the event, you could sit there with an iPhone and scan the QR, QR code on their ticket, which they've printed from your website. So it's really, really powerful. The official Facebook plugin, if you're doing social integration with Facebook, is a really, really good one. I've put Jetpack here. Um, how many of you have heard of Jetpack? OK, lots of you. Personally, I'm not a fan of Jetpack. I have my reasons, which you can chat to me about. But I put that there because, like you can see, a lot of you have used it. Um, your clients more than likely are going to come into contact with Jetpack. So it's important that you know about it. It's, it's important you know how to remove features from Jetpack. If they're annoying your clients, you've got to know about it. And your custom functions. If you're building a lot of themes for clients and you're reusing a lot of functions in a theme, you might want to consider building that out into a plugin. 
It's going to save you a lot of time. Specialist hosting, like has been mentioned, WP Engine, they're really, really good. Zippy Kid, Pagely, and Woo Hosting is coming soon. All of these guys specialize in WordPress. So what that means is they've got guys who are focusing on WordPress all the time. So they'll know if your site falls over, okay, it's for this reason because of this in WordPress. They're not going to be like, okay, well, what platform are you on? Are you in PHP? Are you in .NET? What must I do here? They'll be able to resolve your issue much easier. And someone like WP Engine has active caching, which you don't have to worry about. So they're actively optimizing your, your server scale. Themes and frameworks. Theme markets are, there's a dime a dozen, really. Um, some of the best ones out there are, in terms of frameworks, there's the Woo framework, which I helped build, so I think it's really amazing. And I think the numbers of clients says that. There's the Genesis framework by the guys at StudioPress. It's also quite prolific. It's really, really good. And a lot of theme companies are using Twitter Bootstrap um, to build new theme frameworks. I see quite a few BuddyPress uh, theme makers are starting to use it. That's built by Twitter, so it's got to be good. Um, like I mentioned, WooThemes and StudioPress, they've been around pretty much the longest. The reason why they're so high up and stuff, and from an objective point of view, I, w I was a WooThemes user before I worked there, um, and I was a StudioPress user before I worked at WooThemes. And something that both companies do particularly well is they um, get their code audited by WordPress core developers. And more recently, WooThemes got the Woo framework audited by Securi. So it has a Securi certified stamp of approval on it. Which brings me to my next point. Theme marketplaces like Theme Forest, be very, very careful of what you buy from there. Read the reviews, read the comments, check the forums. There's a lot of controversy at the moment about that because the code quality on there is not good. They have tried to improve that, but be very cautious of what you buy from there. I'm not bashing them, they're cool guys, but it's a problem at the moment. So to finish up, selecting tools is quite a difficult process. And like I said, experience is going to help with that. Um, but the main thing is, if you're not sure about what tool to use, get involved with the community. Ask someone. Ask someone from not necessarily just me. Ask some, one of the core developers. They're all on Twitter, Nason, Mark Jackworth. Ask someone, and you'll 90% of the time you'll get an answer. That's one of the beauties about the WordPress community. It's everyone helps each other out, which is awesome. So, questions? Okay, just to spice it up a little bit, uh, we <laughs> Jeff will choose uh, a winner for one of their prizes. They've got a WooCommerce um, extensions package of $300. And a couple of dev um, lifetime, I think it's lifetime subscription or, or dev subscriptions. Um, yeah, and then the rest of the theme prizes we'll be giving away on uh, Twitter. So, Jeff, if you want to give away the WooCommerce extension to one of the questions. You cool. We have a winner. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I ask three questions, do I get three prizes? Mm. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're mostly to do with, uh, let me just page back five pages here, it's a long talk. Um, you, you spoke about backup buddy, mm. um, and someone, someone earlier was saying do not download a plugin for backups, um, yeah. because of speed mostly, right? Yes. Is that a big issue for you? or? No, it, like uh, with Mark's talk. Um, when he talked about, he showed you the different levels of your site, and as you grow, you get bigger and you scale in terms of your server. Same thing with backups. Let's take, for example, my personal website. Let's say it's getting 1,000 page views a month. I'm not going to worry about fault press, because if my site goes down, yippee. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not really going to care. But if it's, if it's super important, and take, for example, WooThemes, who's getting well over a million hits, or I don't even know how much it is now, Something like Backup Buddy is just going to kill the server. It's right. going to kill the site. So that, what, in terms of technical, what's happening is it's running on the WordPress cron. It's not running outside of the scope of WordPress. So someone has to visit your site to trigger that backup, which is horrible. So someone visits your site, the backup triggers, 
everything else slows down. That's the reason why. So you wouldn't use that for a, a big site. You would use something like VaultPress who does proactive, it's like a pull, instead of a, a push to the backup. Right. It's and where, where does it back up to? Because if it's going straight onto your server yeah. only, and that gets hacked. Most of the plugins you can choose, you can do either a local backup to your server, or most of them now have Dropbox backup, integration with S3. So for me, what, what I've experimented with, I've done Backup Buddy, VaultPress, and Press Backup. Um, what I use is Press Backup, I back up to Dropbox, and then Backup Buddy, I back up locally, and then VaultPress obviously backs up to VaultPress. All right, and Manage WP, don't you find there's an issue there with, um, with passwords? Because I mean, you hand over your WordPress login details, and then they can just log into all of your WordPress accounts. Yeah, that is an element of trust. Um, you, you do have the free version, but you do pay for that service, so yeah, it depends how much you trust people with passwords and things like that. Um, yeah. Okay, That's thank you.